Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. We are back for another trucking vlog. We are picking up right where we left off from the last video, so if you haven't watched that one, please make sure to go and check it out. If you don't want to check it out, I guess I can just catch you up real quick. Basically, we're on a load that is going from like Toledo area of Oregon down to Southern California, and we have gotten to our first rest stop. We had a little bit of a stressful night last night, but we did eventually get a spot. And today we are going to be heading down to one of our drop yards. Just it happened to be like right in the center of where I am now and where I need to be. So I'm basically going to end up doing like 350 miles today and another 350 the next day to get the delivery there. Um, and even with that, we're going to get the delivery there like a day early. So um, we are ahead of schedule, which is awesome. Makes things a little bit less stressful. I'm going to go ahead and get ready for the day and then we'll get out on the road. Hopefully I'll record a little bit more while actually on the road today as opposed to yesterday where it was just like some dash cam footage here and there. We have got directions to where we're stopping and we are ready to get rolling. I've done my pre-trip and all that. We're all set. I'm gonna go ahead and roll down these windows a little bit. It's already like 70 degrees outside. So it's looking like it's gonna be a nice day. And we are on the move. I got no trucks next to me, which makes it nice. I don't have to worry about the tail swing. Now to get back to I-5, I'm gonna make a hard left here. But I don't think that'll be an issue. I said we got about 350 miles of driving to do today uh, we got a couple mountain passes oh I don't have a stop everybody else does nice um, so yeah we got some mountain passes today again we are grossing I think like 76,000 pounds or something um, so we're definitely gonna have to take it nice and easy on those mountain roads had a couple yesterday as well and man the uphills are not fun I think I at one point I was going as slow as 25 miles an hour with you know full full throttle so I've got a feeling that uh, today's gonna take a little while uh, we're definitely gonna have to be patient we are working our way back to I-5 so we got a little bit of a downhill to a light here so Again, got to be careful with how fully loaded I am and the light is going red, so at least we know plenty beforehand that we got to come to a stop here. And this is a bit of a sharp turn, so that'll be kind of interesting. Let's see. I-5 south left lane. Okay, so... I gotta make sure that this car behind me doesn't do something silly when I make my my wide left to make sure I clear that uh, clear that island in the center. I gotta make sure that this car doesn't try and undercut me, so I'm gonna have to keep a close eye on my mirror. Hope you guys are having a great day. I hope that the first trucking vlog, or first, I guess technically two trucking vlogs, only one of them actually had any trucking in it, but I hope the first two trucking vlogs were uh, were entertaining. Hope you guys enjoyed them. Uh, at the time that I'm recording this, I have edited one of them, but have not uploaded it because I don't have Wi-Fi. Um, and then the other one, I literally just finished recording last night and have not even started editing it. Um, we're, we should get to um, where we're going fairly early today. So with that being the case, hopefully I'll have some good time to edit and all that. But again, we'll kind of have to see. So again, got to keep an eye on the mirror there. They're not even coming through the intersection until I clear it, so that's nice. And we are good. But uh, yeah, so I have no idea, at the at the point that I'm recording this, I have no idea if I've gotten any feedback or anything like that, or uh, how many people have watched the videos, literally no nothing at all. So um, if you have left some feedback, I do appreciate it. However, I obviously cannot uh, acknowledge it yet or um, put it into practice yet because I have not seen it so and that's probably gonna be the case for at least the first few vlogs um, Because I, I've got a feeling so today and tomorrow are probably gonna be this video and then 
the next video will start when I have my next load. Obviously, that's subject to change. That's just what I'm planning for. With that being the case, I don't I don't know when the first time I'm gonna get Wi-Fi is to be able to upload this. Again, we had issues, as you guys will have seen by the time you get to this video. Uh, we had issues trying to get my Wi-Fi set up in the truck, so I do not have Wi-Fi. And um, the places that I've stopped at so far, if they did have Wi-Fi, I uh, didn't see the information on it. Um, or uh, they didn't reach the uh, truck from where I was parked. So yeah, no Wi-Fi yet. Hopefully again, I'll, I'll get some tonight or tomorrow night maybe. I don't know for sure. Uh, we're just kind of playing it by ear. So it is what it is. We're going with the flow. And I guess whenever you guys see this is when, <laughs> when I've gotten Wi-Fi. I will say I'm having a ton of fun recording them. So. Even though I can't see your guys' feedback yet, hopefully it's good. <laughs> Got to talk on the phone with my wife for a while yesterday. That was really nice. We also talked on the phone a little bit this morning. Um, she usually works from home. However, on uh, these days, she works from like like on today and tomorrow of every week. She works uh, in office, so we're not able to talk on the phone today. But that means that I can record more while driving. So kind of works out. But. Obviously, I do I do love talking to her, so it's nice when we get to do that. And it is looking like it's gonna be another bright, sunshiny day. It somehow has cooled down. I guess, oh, the temperature is probably, that it's showing was probably higher than it actually was because the truck had been sitting idling for a while. So there was heat from the engine that probably was uh, making that a bit inaccurate. Um, whereas now we've got air flowing through the truck and that's probably helping quite a bit. I will say I do like that these trucks have adaptive cruise control like just now obviously I'm now only going 43 miles an hour hopefully you guys can see that um, and I didn't even I didn't hit the brakes or anything the truck did all of it for me so I actually enjoy that in in normal passenger vehicles I hate adaptive cruise control but in this truck I absolutely love it it is so nice um, although in this case I guess we're only slowing down because this one guy has, has his flashers on so I'm gonna have to go around him. Hopefully somebody will let me over. It's not gonna be this guy. All right, I think we're just gonna have to cut off the next person. Oh, they're letting me over. Thank you. Give him a little blinky light action. I don't know why this guy is going so slow, but he is. So yeah, a nice and simple day as far as directions go. We literally just stay on I-5 for 350 miles until we get to our exit, and then we basically get off the exit, make a couple turns, and then we are there. So nice and easy day as far as that goes, but again, won't be easy as far as mountain passes and stuff like that. So we at least still get a little bit of action. What? Isn't that the dude that was just had his flashes on and I just passed. <laughs> okay, weird. All right, well, I guess there was, I don't know, maybe he was, uh, when I looked over at him, he was like looking down, he was looking down to his side. So I don't know if maybe he was texting or something or something fell on his seat or something and he was just trying to figure it out without having to pull over. I don't know why he didn't just pull over, especially he was passing a rest area. Like, dude, just stop in the rest area and figure out whatever you need to figure out. But. Whatever. Either way, I was able to pass him safely and now he's driving away safely, so I guess it really doesn't matter too much. I'm just confused. I don't know what what would have happened that would have warranted going like 40 miles an hour on the interstate and then going right back to business, but whatever. Something's rattling. I think it's my fridge, but I, I, it's, like it sounds like it's coming from the fridge, but the sound itself is like the same sound as the like that glass plate from the uh, like the glass plate shaking that's in the microwave. So, I mean, I would assume that it's that glass plate in the microwave, but it doesn't sound like the where the sound is coming from does not sound like it's coming from the microwave. It sounds like it's coming from like the floor area near the near the fridge. So that's super weird. But either way, I thought it was I had a, an echo like show like one of those little Amazon like screen things. I had one of those on top of the fridge and it kept coming off of its uh, like the Velcro command strip mount thing. And so I thought maybe it was 
that like bouncing, but again, I, I know it wouldn't really have a glass sound, but I still was hopeful that maybe it was just hitting something and it was making a weird sound, but that sound is still there. So clearly that is not what it was. So I guess I'm gonna have to deal with that all day again today. We've got an open scale house, so I'm going to take this off just in case. But we got the green light, baby. So we are all good. I like the adaptive cruise control. I will say that's one of those like extra safety features I don't normally like, but I actually do like it in this. Uh, there are some other safety features though that do still annoy me very, very much. Um, and one of those is, as I'm sure you've heard a few times now, the like fake rumble strips. So it's supposed to, if you're like departing your lane without a blinker, it's supposed to like imitate rumble strips to, you know, help you realize that you're leaving your lane, you know? However, pretty much any time there's an on-ramp or an off-ramp, it like freaks out because I, I don't actually know why. I'm assuming because the lane, like the lines are splitting away from you, it for some reason thinks that that means you're crossing over the line. Um, and so it rumbles at you and and every time it rumbles at you it turns off the music and it like is super loud I don't know how loud it is to you guys, but um, Yeah, when it's like late at night or whatever and I've got my music down low and all of a sudden that rumble strip is super loud Just because I'm like passing an off-ramp or something Super super annoying it pisses me off. So that is one safety feature that I absolutely hate the other one is the distance warning so if you, if you have cruise control on, it won't give you a distant warning, right? Unless you're like overriding the cruise control by accelerating, you know? Um, and then if you don't have cruise control on and you, you get to a point where it thinks you're too close to somebody, it'll, it'll give you a loud alert that lets you know you're too close to them. And it alerts you like every 30 seconds. So what sucks about that is that when you're coming up on a truck that's going like one or two miles an hour faster than you, you obviously, I mean, slower than you, you obviously don't want to get over like too soon, but if you don't get over soon enough, it starts screaming at you, you know, that, uh, that you're like too close to them. And it thinks you're too close to them when you're like 250 feet away. So to give you an idea, this is 250 feet to that truck in front of me. So imagine I'm only going one mile an hour faster than them and I'm this far away. I obviously don't want to get over and cause a bunch of traffic, right? But I, in order to get closer, I have to listen to that thing beep every 30 seconds. So it's just, maybe when I'm describing it, it doesn't sound that annoying, but once I, you, you guys will see it in practice, I'm sure at some point. And once you see it in practice, you'll realize why it's so annoying to me. But I digress. It, uh, all small things, you know, overall I do actually really like this truck. Um, again, I, I, I really like the downhill descent. I use that a lot. Again, you guys will probably see that in practice today. Um, there, there is a lot of things that I do really like about this truck, but I just had to share some of my, my gripes with it first. We are going up our first mountain. I've just passed a sign that said, uh, slow trucks next six miles. So that means we've got six miles of this torture of 28 miles an hour, 29 miles an hour. I also was going faster than this guy for a second and now all of a sudden he's he's starting to pull away from me again that's why i'm not over there although that's also like a shoulder so i don't know i don't know i've seen a lot of truckers that, that use that and like because of how slow they're going my mentor told me not to do that so i don't know maybe i can get some feedback from real truckers if you were in this situation would you get in that lane if you were going 29 miles an hour or would you just stay in the actual lane of the road I mean, it's not like there's traffic behind me, you know, so that's kind of my thought process of why I'm staying in this lane right now, but I don't know. I, I would definitely appreciate some feedback because like my, my mentor made a big deal about it. He was like, don't do that. That is stupid. You know, especially like in areas like we just passed where we were going past a concrete barrier, you know, he said like his main point was, you know, you come around a blind corner or something and it's like that where like the, the shoulder is is what you're driving in like there's like in his case right now he's got like a little bit of asphalt off to the left from the concrete that he or off to the right from the concrete that he's driving on so if there were to be a stalled vehicle or something the stalled vehicle has enough room to get out of his way but my mentor's point was like in areas where there's not that case you could come around a blind corner and there's a car there and now you either have to try and come to a stop or you have to try and swerve back into the actual like lane you know um and that could obviously be dangerous so 
I understand where he's coming from and that's kind of again why I'm choosing to do this the way that I'm doing this right now but I am curious like if I'm just curious what other people think would what, what would you do would you get over into the shoulder to what is sh technically the shoulder or would you uh, hang out in the lane also I wanted to record just because this is beautiful you know crazy views we're getting up this is one of the the taller passes that we're gonna gonna go through so you guys are gonna get to some, see some pretty stuff I think we're gonna be going through Mount Shasta area soon um, gonna get to see like Lake Shasta and all that kind of stuff which is honestly one of my favorite parts of this drive every time so I'm excited for you guys to see that for anyone that hasn't actually seen it in person before and I guess you technically still won't be seeing it in person but at least you'll be seeing it from a first-person view <laughs> like driving in the shoulder feels weird so this is an off-ramp right it's got its own little lane and that truck just drove through the off-ramp you know like and then just continued on through the shoulder like instead of taking the exit you know so it, it looked like he was going to take the exit but then you know he did because he's just been driving in the shoulder so i also want to note for this situation there's no signs that say like you know, like I've, I've seen some areas where it looks like it's a shoulder but there's a sign that says like trucks okay to use shoulder or some you know something along those lines or slow trucks use shoulder something along those lines that explains like yes trucks are good to be in this spot right there's none of that for this mountain none of the, nothing that says like trucks use shoulder slow trucks you know travel you know whatever nothing so that's why I don't I feel like my mentor is probably right and you shouldn't shouldn't drive over there but I also like I don't know you know and there's the view for you guys obviously I gotta look very quickly because I have to get back to looking straight ahead but and we've got our sign that says long steep downgrade ahead so that must mean we're getting pretty close to the top which I want to say is good because I'm sick of going 27 miles an hour but the reality is on the way down, I'm probably gonna only go like 35 or 40 miles an hour. So, um, just because I, you know, my, my mentors and, my, or my mentor and all the people at my truck school always stressed, you know, you can go down a mountain too slow a million times, but you can only go down too fast once. So I always, always, always err on the side of caution. I always go probably way slower than I need to, but I don't care, you know, how many people get upset at me for going so slow, I don't care. How long it takes as long as I get to the bottom safely I am happy so I am probably gonna set my cruise to like or my my downhill descent to like 40 miles an hour it may be I don't even know if I'll go that high um, I guess I'll probably set it to 40 and then if it has trouble holding it at 40 I'll give the brakes a solid stab bring it down to 35 and then I'll set it for 35 and that should definitely be good enough so I am just gonna leave my flashers on. Sorry that you guys are gonna have to listen to that for this whole time, but, uh, oh, and I got this guy that's gonna probably pull out in front of me. I'm gonna let him know that he can go. Gonna give him some light flashes. All right, and he took it. I don't know, honestly, I might just set it for 35 right off the rip. All right, and then there's that little icon that says we're on downhill descent mode. So we are all good. And you know what, I am. I'm just gonna leave it at 35. We're gonna take a nice slow cruise down the mountain. So this is downhill descent mode, so I'm literally doing nothing. I am not controlling the engine brakes, I'm not controlling the regular brakes, not controlling the throttle, nothing. The truck does it all. So it's pretty sweet and it works really, really well. The only thing is that every once in a while, as I'm sure you'll see probably at some point while I'm going down this mountain, it'll shake. I don't actually know exactly what it's doing. I'm assuming it's going between two levels of the engine brake. So for anyone that doesn't truck, um, there's three levels of our of our engine brake, right? So it has level one, level two, and level three, and it is down on the on the stock selector. So one is like not very strong, two is a little stronger, three is the strongest. Or I might have that backwards, but either way, one click down is not very strong, two clicks down stronger, three strongest. So when you've got downhill descent mode, it switches back and forth between those three modes on its own. 
and what it does is every once in a while it'll get to a point where it's trying to keep you at 35 miles an hour or whatever speed you set it to and it'll go back and forth between those two speeds and it'll like shake the whole truck because it's going back and forth it's like you know like on off on off on off on off like like really that fast and it, so it's kind of funny because the truck shakes back and forth see it kind of did it for a second there but yeah, so that's the only complaint I have with it. But honestly, I'll take that any day over having to try and maintain my own speed all the way down. Like, this makes going down the mountain super, super stress-free. So I will always, always, always take that. Especially because it lets me actually enjoy the view a little bit, you know? Rather than having to keep a hawk eye on my speed and, you know, be stressed out all the way down, I can just kind of, you know, keep a... a relatively calm eye on my speed making sure that it's not getting away because it i will say the downhill descent if you set it for a speed that is too high like i kind of mentioned with if i had set it for 40 and it started to get away you know i would mash the brakes you know a little bit that is the one thing you have to keep an eye because it will do that if, if you set it for too high of a speed for it to be able to maintain it will start to get away and you have to catch it early on and then set it to a lower speed and then you know it'll it'll maintain it a little better but um, overall it is a lot more stress-free <laughs> which means I can actually enjoy the view a little bit and again obviously everybody's flying past me you know uh, all, all these other truck drivers are going way way faster than I am and I'm sure they're probably driving by me like this freaking rookie look at him going so slow why is he doing that but I don't care I don't care how long I've been driving I'm still gonna do this I'm you know I, I've got a beautiful wife to get home to and some dogs and lots of you know people that care about me that want me to get home safe every day so I don't care how stupid I look I don't care how many people I upset I will always make sure that I get to the bottom of these mountains safely I will say I may have to switch to my other hat for doing the GoPro on, on the top here um, this hat like doesn't exactly have a lot of structural support so right now the hat bill is actually like because of how heavy the GoPro is right all the weight is at the front of the hat so right now that the, the bill of the hat is resting on my glasses which is then pushing on my nose which doesn't feel super great after long periods of time um, so the other hat that is still kind of the case but the hat the other hat has a little bit more support so it doesn't rest as heavily on my glasses so I, I'll probably switch and see if that does any better because I, I don't want to get any headaches or anything like that trying to record this stuff. We are leaving Oregon and heading into California. So now we get to endure the 55 mile an hour speed limits. All right, and it looks like we're starting to level out a little bit here. So I'm now gonna go ahead and bump this up to like 45, 46 ish. And in fact, we actually might be leveling all the way out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the downhill descent off. I'm gonna turn my flashes off. And then um, I'm gonna still have to use the engine brakes, but it's no longer steep enough that I'm not gonna be able to handle it on my own. What do we got going on over here? It looks like some construction or something. I'm not really gonna be able to look, but go back and look at the footage later. And I gotta keep an eye on my speed here. It looks like they're doing construction or something. Oh, all right, never mind. The inspection station is still another four miles away. Or, yeah, four miles away. So we have got still another 6% grade for two miles. Um, I don't know. I might I might use the downhill descent and just set it for like 45 miles an hour or something like that. I, I don't know. I might just do 40 again. I think I'm just gonna do 40 again, honestly. So throw the flashers back on. Sorry that you guys are gonna have to listen to that again. But, again, I would rather be safe than sorry. And again, when we get down to the inspection station, I'm going to take the hat off. You guys will hopefully still be able to see. I don't know, when I set the hat down last time, I saw that it was kind of pointing downward a little bit too much. So, I don't know if you guys will be able to see me or not. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try to let you guys still see me. Got some nice Kenworths going past me. I think the first one was a Kenworth. I didn't actually look at it too much. Either way, long nose, long hood trucks look nice. Also, I was totally wrong earlier. I don't know why I was getting confused. This is Ashland, so I for some reason said something about Mount Shasta and Shasta Lake and all that. That's not for 
a little further. Yeah, sorry. That was so that was Ashland that we just went over. So again, another one of the mountain passes. We go over gosh, I think like three or four in total by the time we get to where we're going in Southern California. You know, because we got the grapevine, we've got the one near Shasta, we've got Ashland, and then um, the one that is south of Eugene. I don't I don't know if it actually has a name or whatever, but um, there's that one as well. So now we're starting to level out a little bit. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and take over on my own here. Go ahead and turn these flashers off, even though I am still going kind of slow. Let's see what this sign says. Yeah, 4% grade now for two miles. So nowhere near as bad. I can handle that on my own. Again, we'll just have to keep a little bit closer of an eye on our speed here. I that, or I guess I can just do this. I'll just set the downhill descent to a little bit higher of a speed. We'll go 47. An oddly specific number, but it'll work. And actually, I am going to go ahead and take you guys off of my head now and uh, set you down. There, you're at a little bit of an angle, but at least you can see what's going on a little bit. First time at this inspection station by myself. Let's see how this goes. Hello. Got my bill of lading right here for you. Sweet. Thank you so much. You have a good one too. All right, well that was nice and easy. I definitely thought that was going to be more complicated. I thought they were going to like take a, you know, take the bill of lading in there or something and like really take a good look at it. But nope, they literally just glanced at it and said, all right, you're good. Sent me on my way. All right, now we're back to semi-flat land for a little bit, so that's nice. Taking a quick break at the rest stop, um, I'm going to go ahead and take my 30 here. Uh, I don't necessarily need to. I have enough time on my clock as it is to make it to where I'm trying to go, but I had to stop anyway to go to the bathroom, and also um, I was given a fuel stop that is before where I'm trying to spend the night tonight, so I wanted to make sure I had the directions to that correctly and made sure I knew where I was going and all that. Got those things figured out. I think our 30 minute break is just about done. We're about to get back on the road, but wanted to keep you guys updated on what was going on. All right, we're about to get back out on the road, and this is kind of nice. The guy that was next to me is also leaving, so that makes it easier when I get out of here. I'm just gonna swing real nice and wide here. Might as well use up all the space just to be sure. back to rockin' and rollin'. So we just stopped at a way station. Uh, for some reason, my pre-pass didn't light up with anything. Um, I thought maybe for a second, I was like, oh, maybe these scales are closed, which would be crazy. I've never seen those scales closed before. Uh, like, any time that I've, because I've driven this a lot in a car. Um, and every time I passed it in a car, like, every time we passed it with my mentor, like, I've never seen that scale closed. Um, and sure enough, it was not closed. Um, that also was the scale that when I was with my mentor, we went through and we got pulled in for an inspection. So I will admit I got a bit nervous. I was like, oh man, if I have to do an inspection today, I am not gonna be, I'm not gonna be feeling very confident. But uh, the guy right in front of us got pulled in for an inspection and then we got to roll through. So. Yeah, that was that was nice. Uh, that I, I think I got really lucky. <laughs> We're going through that pass kind of near Shasta now. This is actually the pass near Shasta, uh, as opposed to the one earlier that I thought was, and I was not even close yet. But now we actually are. <laughs> Now we're getting to the pretty bit, so I took my hat off for a little bit while we were going through like construction zones and stuff, but now we're getting to the spot where it, it gets really pretty, so I wanted to make sure you guys could see it. Like, how far you can see and just the mountains around you with all the trees on them, it's just so cool to me. Dude, a VW thing! That's cool, don't see too many of those. Ooh, it smells funky. Oh, that's why. There must have been a fire or something over there. I think that was just a park ranger, but I think he, he was stomping on something it looked like. So I don't know if maybe somebody threw a cigarette out the window or something and he just happened to catch it before he got out of hand or what, but definitely smelled like something was on fire. And I got blessed with another beautiful day. It's almost 80 degrees. 
there's like a super nice breeze. It's like the perfect temperature outside right now. It's so nice. I, for some reason, wore a long sleeve shirt. Don't know why I did that to myself, but I did. Definitely should not have worn a long sleeve shirt, especially sitting in the sun. It gets hot. But, I mean, I've got AC and the windows being down and everything will help. Wow, a bear crossing sign. I've never noticed that. Man, could you imagine if we just like had some bears run out in front of us while we're going down a mountain at even 45 miles an hour? Like I'm technically going slow. I can turn this corner and all of a sudden, boom, there's some bears. That'd be terrible. years and then yeah we 
because they got like I guess some really good rain and then it started looking normal again and now it once again very much does not look normal anymore. Crazy how quickly that changes. Still pretty though. Tell why? I like to call it the uh, the roller coaster. Also, at the moment, we're kind of bouncing to the beat, which is sick. That's the only reason. Normally, I mute the music for. <laughs> Normally, I mute, mute the music to talk. Okay, I, I seriously might seem like I'm exaggerating, but I'm really not. This is really how bouncy this road is. In fact, the GoPro probably is stabilizing it a little bit. So it is probably worse than whatever you guys are seeing. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, we're almost to the end. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, dude, it's ridiculous. We just got our fuel and now we are headed to where we're staying for the night, which is only about 30 minutes or so away. So that is awesome. So we still got three hours left on our clock. I could go further, but obviously, like I've talked about here before, uh, I picked where I'm staying tonight because it is the halfway point between where I started this morning and where I need to get to by the end of the day. So although I could go further, there's not really a point. Last time when I was here with my mentor, I, I got the curb a little bit on my way out. This time I did not, so that's good. successfully made it to our dropping point. Thankfully there's a bunch of open spots here so it was nice and easy to park which was not the case last night so I'm happy that tonight it was uh, nice and smooth but I'll pick back up in the morning. See you guys then. Okay it is now morning. Uh, we ended up having to like somebody came and knocked at my door at like I don't know eight o'clock or something like that and let me know that I could not like park with my trailer where I was. I had to drop the trailer and then park elsewhere which at the moment I was like, well, that's kind of annoying. But then when he told me where to park, I was like, okay, that's actually not bad because it ended up putting me closer to uh, the porta potty and dumpster and stuff like that. So it actually ended up being kind of nice. But that said, uh, we now will need to go hook back up to our trailer and then, you know, get on the road. But either way, it's just a little before 6 a.m. right now. Uh, I'm going to go to the bathroom, brush my teeth and stuff, and then we will go hook up to the trailer, do our free trip, and get on the road. We are ready to roll. We're hooked up to the trailer. This person that backed in the trailer next to me parked super, super close, so I'm going to have to make sure I pull all the way out before I start to turn it all, which is fine. I've clearly got plenty of room. There's also a bunch of other people that are rolling in and out of here, so i got to just keep an eye out. All right, so i got to get to the exit and then check out. Oh, i got to turn off my dome light. Don't need that anymore. I think I've been leaving it on all day, like every day that I've driven so far. Because <laughs> usually by the time I leave, it's already bright outside, so I don't I don't notice it. In this case, it's dark still, so it was pretty obvious that it was still on. Speaking of it being dark, sorry if you can't see anything. Hopefully you can see that the sunrise is already looking like it's going to be really pretty. Today's probably going to be a pretty boring one. Well, sorry, I forgot that this is a continuation of a video. But either way, today's trip 
it's probably going to be a pretty boring one. Um, there's not a lot that goes on. This is kind of that empty space where it's all just farmland, so not a lot of really pretty stuff to see or anything. I probably won't have a lot to say until we get to the grapevine, and then the grapevine's going to be pretty crazy. But uh, either way, I'm going to take this off real quick while I'm getting ready to pull up to this guy. We're all checked out, and we are ready to head to Southern California. And I will admit, I'm not looking forward to uh, to doing the grapevine with this this load. I know both going up and coming back down are not going to be fun. Dude, I don't know why they put such huge speed bumps here. Like, I get that it's a lot of trucks and stuff, and maybe there's, I mean, I saw there was a lot of cars in the lot, too, that probably come flying in here, but, dude, these speed bumps are so huge. It's crazy. Ooh, get that one a little fast. All right, we have cleared the monster speed bumps. Thankfully, there's only two. If there were more, I'd be kind of pissed, but only two so it's not too bad this right here up until the grapevine is probably going to be the most entertaining part of our drive this this right hand turn and then left hand turn onto the freeway that's probably gonna be it because the rest of the day very boring I'll still you know have dash cam clips for you guys to to enjoy but yeah, for the most part, it's pretty pretty lame, I'll be honest. <laughs> this was the main reason I was hoping that uh, that my first trip would not be to LA, was purely because of the fact that this drive can be super, super boring. Yeah, this road is so bad. All the roads in California are so bad, dude. They're awful. In fact, the roads are so bad that on the freeway yesterday, um, I hit a section of bumps that were so bad, it my dash cam protected the clip because it thought I got in an accident. That's how bad the bumps are. Oh, also you may notice I've got some snacks on the dash here. I normally eat breakfast before I get out onto the road, but this morning I was like, you know what? I wanna get out here, try and get down to LA before the LA area, before like rush hour traffic. Uh, which meant I had to kind of be on top of things and getting out of here this morning. So uh, we are actually a little bit ahead of schedule, thankfully. I hadn't planned to leave the yard until about 7, and it is 6.45. So we are just a little bit ahead, which is nice. So maybe I would have had time to eat breakfast, but either way, I just wanted to get out of there as quick as possible and, and get headed down to, to Southern California. The sunrise is very pretty, and now you guys can actually see it. There's not a bunch of trailers and stuff blocking it. I really like the way that it like lights up the clouds in like a pinkish tone in front of me, but then to the left you can tell it's like super orange. Obviously the sun isn't like up up yet, but it's starting to light up the sky and it looks really cool, especially with the mountain range in front of us. It's really pretty. This is the one advantage to be today being boring, like I said it would be, is that uh, it's boring because there's a lot of flat land but that flat land allows us to see the sunrise really, really easily, so I really like that. That, that is the one advantage to, to this route, is getting really beautiful sunrises and sunsets. I do not 
like that way station very much, so not having to stop at it is fantastic. We're trying to carry as much momentum as we can, but I already know we're going to lose it pretty fast. We are probably going to be one of the slower ones heading up the mountain, so I mean, I guess that makes my life a little bit easier, not having to worry about trying to pass other people, but I don't know. I guess we'll see when we actually get onto the mountain. Other thing, I did not know that with this load, I technically am only supposed to deliver at my delivery time. So I had messaged my driver manager and I was like, hey, I'm gonna be there at this time, you know, uh, after that, is it okay if I go to this yard that's like 40 miles away? to spend the night and my driver manager was like well you can't deliver without an appointment so let me reach out to our customer service person and I'll let you know if you're able to deliver early or not and that was uh, about an hour ago and I have not heard anything from her so if I don't hear anything by the time there's there's a rest stop up at the top kind of at the top of the grapevine and if I don't hear anything from my driver manager by then I'm going to stop at that rest stop and wait to hear from her because that will determine uh, where I end up. I will either, from that rest stop, if I am able to deliver today, I'll go to my delivery point. And if I am not able to deliver today, then I will go to that yard that I was planning to go to. So it will all work out. Oh, I pissed off this guy behind me. I thought I was going to be able to pass this UPS truck but then he picked up some speed and I lost some speed. And this Walmart guy behind me got, or I don't think it's Walmart, but he got pissed off. He was flashing his lights at me, he was not happy. But gotta do what you gotta do, man. I really thought I had, had the momentum to pass him, so I was going for it. Didn't want to get myself choked up, but that's okay. So now we begin our long, slow climb. 28 miles an hour. Super fun. Alright, well he didn't flip me off or anything, so I guess he's not too upset. I'm sure these other people behind him are probably more upset than he is. <laughs> oh, and now he's not getting over, even though he can. <laughs> this red truck is up his ass. flashed my lights at him to let him, the, the guy in front of me, I let him know that he could get over and he didn't. He chose to stay in that lane a little longer. This is the joys of the grapevine. This happens pretty much all the way up where people just get stacked up and some, you know, everybody has a, a load that's a different weight. So everybody goes a different speed, but we have to be stuck to these right two lanes. And so you get somebody like me going 29, 28 miles an hour, and then somebody else with a load that's 38,000 pounds or something that is able to go 31 miles an hour, and so they want to pass me, and then, you know, they just, and then the people that have a load that's 17,000 pounds or whatever that are able to go like 40 miles an hour are going, you know, want to get past both of us, but can't because they're stuck to the right two lanes, but. You end up with a lot of people that also just use the third lane anyway and just risk getting in trouble. I don't. I would never. Uh, it's it's just not worth it to me. I, I like even when I was with my driver mentor, he really stressed, you know, making sure you don't get hung up because you don't want to lose your momentum or whatever. But I don't know. To me, it's not that big of a deal. Like if I lose my momentum and I end up going super slow all the way up the mountain, then it is what it is, you know. Nothing I can, nothing I could do about it. I mean, it's not worth breaking the law and risking getting a, you know, huge ticket just to potentially make it where I'm going a few minutes faster. And I know maybe that's not the best mentality to have as a truck driver because when you're paid by the mile, you know, every mile, the the, the faster you can go, the more money you're going to make. But I don't know. I didn't I didn't get into trucking to make a bunch of money. I got into trucking to have fun. So. I'm not in a huge rush at, at any time. I want to get my loads on time, you know, make sure they get to where they need to go at the time that they're supposed to be there, and that is my only concern. If I can get there earlier and I, it's easy to do, then sure, I'll get there earlier, like today, potentially, you know, as long as 
I get the approval to, to deliver early, well then I'm gonna deliver early. But if I can't deliver early, then it's not a big deal. So that's my little little rant for the day, I guess. <laughs> I understand why my driver mentor stressed not driving in the shoulder because that shoulder is definitely not wide enough for that. So I can understand in that situation because now this guy had to get over and then I had to get over and it was a whole thing good to deliver today. I'm not able to actually read the message, obviously, because um, I'm driving, so the IVG is synced to the truck, so whenever I'm moving, it won't let me read anything. It doesn't, it just lets me listen to it. So from listening to it, it sounds like I can deliver it today. It reads literally everything and it's a robot, so it doesn't really read it very well, I guess, for lack of a better way to describe it. So I'll have to double check. I'm, I'm gonna pull up off at the rest stop that's in like four miles anyways, um, because I have to reply to the message to confirm that I'm good with what it says. So it really doesn't matter either way. I guess either way I would have had to stop at the rest area, but now I can stop at the rest area, just confirm real quick and then continue on my way. So that's pretty sweet. Okay, so we are in fact good to deliver today. The appointment is now set for 1600 today and we are expected to probably get there about 1500 so we're gonna be still a bit earlier early to our appointment but that's okay um, at least we can deliver it today and then hopefully I'll be able to get over to our other yard to, to spend the night so we should be all good I'm gonna keep going traffic is getting worse so that also it may end up pushing us closer to that 1600 um, so I think it's all gonna actually work out really really nicely so that said, let's go ahead and get back on the road. Man, that is a nice rig. Of course, it's it's a cattle hauler. I feel like the cattle haulers always have the nicest trucks. God, I love that color. All right, we are good to roll. Now I can turn right and take his fenders off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> God, that is such a good looking truck. All right, well, let's get back on the grapevine. arrived in Southern California because there is traffic immediately like we literally just got off the grapevine and we are now in traffic so that's fun and it looks like there's traffic for the majority of the way to where we're delivering so we're gonna have a fun next few hours <laughs> getting some clear road for a little bit uh, and I think we're gonna have it for a little bit longer but then it sounds like uh, there's a crash somewhere up here um, that is going to back us up for a bit. So we're only 30 miles away and Google Maps is saying that it's going to take an hour and 10 minutes, hour and five minutes. I should note, I'm not using Google Maps for my GPS. I mean like I kind of am, but we get given directions. I think I mentioned that before. We get given directions by the company, so I follow those directions. I just use Google Maps as kind of uh, like a backup and a way of knowing how far away I am and everything. But like even in this way, it wanted me to take like 210 East or something and I just ignored it because our directions that we were given says to just stay on I-5 South. So I am not following Google Maps for anyone that was concerned for a second there. <laughs> but yeah, we've got some traffic coming up, but for now we're, we're smooth cruising. There's definitely a lot of cars and I'll admit, I, I just hate driving in, in LA, especially in a truck, but so far, all is well. We are arriving upon the scene of said traffic. Supposedly this only adds 13 minutes, but I kind of doubt that. I feel like this is going to add a lot more than that. I guess we'll see. Alright, so we are getting into the traffic at 1.23. Let's see what time we get out of it. I'm very curious.
48. We've gone about 10 miles. Um, so it's not actually too bad. What, what would that be? 10 miles in 25 minutes? I mean, obviously it's not good, but like, considering it's LA traffic, that's really not too terrible. And I gotta say, the traffic itself isn't what bothers me. Like, having to stop and go and stop and go and stuff doesn't bother me. What stresses me out is all the people that are trying to weave in and out of the lanes trying to get places faster because I leave a gap you know to keep my safe distance and then yeah people will cut right in front of me anyway uh, and it's just not super ideal so it stresses me out a bit as proved right there by two people cutting into my space and again I know this is normal I know it happens all the time and I know it's really not that big of a deal except for now my gap is gone and now everybody's slowing down and now I no longer have that safe distance to come to a stop. So, I, funny that that happened, it literally as I was talking about it, four cars filled up my, my space and then immediately had to slow down. Proving my point of why it stresses me out is that, you know, I'm not necessarily fully loaded, I'm not like an 80,000 pound gross, but I'm at like 76,000 or something like that. So, I've got a lot of weight in here and uh, I leave that gap to make sure that I have enough room to come to a stop and then people fill it up and it does not exactly give me the room that I want to be able to stop. Also, this thing keeps falling and that's really annoying because I had it tucked away, but then I hit a road where it was super, super bumpy and it knocked it out of its spot and now obviously while driving, I can't exactly get it tucked away the way that it was originally. So now it just keeps falling out over and over again and I'm not having a good time with that. So overall, not having a great time, but also overall not having a awful time, just not the time I want to be having. <laughs> we are only 15 miles away and we are still more than an hour ahead of schedule. So we're still looking pretty solid. Just have to wait through more traffic, which is fine. Stressful, but fine. There was a uh, like gray Mustang Mach-E that kept like weaving in and out of all four lanes. I'm talking like cutting all the way across and then cutting all the way across even though we were like almost at a complete stop. And he would just keep ending up in the same spot. Like he would end up between the same four sets of cars. And I thought it was really funny. I, I got some of it on the dash cam. I don't know how many, I think I might have only gotten one of the times that he did it. But uh, it still was hilarious because uh, literally every single time he would end up in the same spot. And he's been doing it now for probably like three or four minutes of just weaving back and forth and back and forth and cutting people off. He almost hit somebody. I think he almost hit the person in front of me. I think that's what I caught on the dash cam. But uh, yeah, he kept ending up behind the same same set of vehicles, which was hilarious. We have taken our exit and now our address should just be up here on the right. Hopefully it is easy to figure out. Whether it is or isn't, we're about to find out. Of course, I got a bunch of traffic behind me. That's not ideal. Let's see. That's Georgia Pacific shipping and receiving. I want Golden Craft. Oh, or maybe Golden Craft is the name of, oh, whoops. Okay, Golden Craft is the name of the Georgia Pacific facility. Shoot, all right, so now I gotta I gotta loop around and come back to come back to there. All right. Whoops. Bummer. Well, good thing we got here super super early. Makes that nice and easy to get fixed. Hopefully, hopefully I can just make a a loop. Oh, no outlet. Okay. I guess we cannot just make a loop. Hmm. That is unfortunate, because I can't make any U-turns or anything. Dang it. All right, well, I guess I'll just, oh, truck route is only straight, so. Dang, man. That sucks. Um, I don't know what to do. This is when not having a truck GPS really sucks. I don't know, maybe there's somewhere over here that I can pull into. No trucks over three tons down that road. That sucks. That really, really sucks. Huh. 
Oh boy. Well, I'm gonna get in the left lane, I guess. Hopefully make a left somewhere. I can take the Imperial Highway back to I-5. I guess we'll do that. As long as I can, as long as it's not a no truck route. God, I screwed that up. That sucks. I know I keep saying the same thing over and over again, but that is all that's in my mind right now, is that that just sucks. Okay, is this Imperial Highway? Yes. I think it's got me, the Google Maps finally has me on a route that gets me back. So this is the problem with not having a truck GPS, is that then when I screw something up and can no longer follow the directions that they give me, I'm totally screwed. But I don't have the money for a truck GPS right now so <laughs> this is just what I got to deal with I guess and just got to make less mistakes and then this won't be a problem I just didn't realize I didn't I it, it said you know like I, I picked up from Georgia Pacific and then when I pulled up the address it has golden craft golden craft as one thing and Georgia Pacific as the other thing so I thought I was delivering to a place named golden craft but Apparently, I am delivering to Georgia Pacific, and the name of the facility is Golden Craft. So, that sucks. Sucks that I didn't know that. And I should have just trusted my gut. I had a feeling that that was it, and then that was the entrance, and I should have just, I should have just done it, and I didn't. I see any signs that say no trucks? trucks down there so we're good I guess you know what you know what I'm gonna do even though it says no stopping or parking anytime I got plenty of room to pull over I'm gonna pull over here make sure I don't hit any of these trees I'm just gonna stop right here I'm gonna figure out what I'm doing here what I need to do to fix this problem all right so hopefully this will solve our problems. And hopefully, since I'm like an hour early, I, I'm now I'm worried that I'm gonna get there and they're gonna be like, sorry, your appointment's not for an hour. Go park somewhere else and then, you know, come back. And I'm gonna have to find somewhere to, somewhere to park the truck. Unless they'll let me park it on their property. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Up. Oh, we got a train. Cool. All nose to tail on the units. You don't, on the locomotives, I mean, you usually don't see that. Well, there's always ways to find a little joy in all the, all the suffering. So, I gotta say, I, I like trains. So, <laughs> Kind of cool to get to see one. I'm gonna set you guys down like I usually do when I get to a place. Hopefully you guys can see me a little bit. If not, sorry. else ahead of me so funny enough that road that uh, that had no outlet that I was gonna turn down and then didn't um, that's where I'm supposed to wait until he calls me and lets me know that uh, the dock is available and the uh, entryway and everything sounds like it's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt but you know what I can do it so either way for now we're gonna go drive over to this street that he said to wait at. And he was super cool. He was like, yo, this is your first time here? And I was like, this is my first time delivering anything. And he was like, oh, okay, cool. Well, congratulations. 
Um, and then he was like, yeah, you're just gonna go wait down there. I'll call you back when you're ready. He was like, there's only one guy ahead of you. And then we'll call you back. He'll be waiting at the dock. You'll slide your tandems, open your doors, all that good stuff. And then you'll back up to the dock and all that. Man, they got some good cars here. GTO, a 5.0 Mustang. There's a Supra down there, Mark V. That's pretty sweet. All right, I gotta keep a close eye on my mirrors for getting out of here. Dude, that Supra is clean too. It looks like it's on bags. We got some nice wheels. I definitely wanna make sure I don't hit it. And then there's a Type R with it. Jeez, this place is sweet. Cleared that cone. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're plenty good. Now, unfortunately, I do have a tree in my way. It makes it a bit hard to see here. Clear enough. to cut that person off but it's fine wow i got some old train cars over there i wonder if that's like a museum or something that is cool an old caboose wow a bunch of old stuff gotta be some sort of museum or something let's see oh no general grinding and manufacturing code so not not a museum unless there's one further down all right now let's see so i'm gonna pull up right here and stop and then let's see if there's a spot for me to get turned around or if I'm just gonna have to like pull into one of these driveways and then do a little back of rooney Okay, there's a cul-de-sac down at the very, very end. So I'm just gonna go down to the cul-de-sac and then just make a U-turn in the cul-de-sac. Super, super tight getting in here. Um, I wish I would have had the GoPro on so that when I leaned out the window, you guys could see how close I was to the walls, but my GoPro is about to die. Um, I now have to back up to the dock once this guy moves, and I am very stressed about it. I already got the tandems all the way to the back because they made me. So this should be interesting. I'm gonna crank it all the way this way. Sorry about the beeping. Gotta make sure I don't get too close to this like open trench to my right here. Okay, I think we're just gonna have to straight back from here so they don't go into that trench. trench I think we're gonna be 
good. My hill assist is doing funky things. And I know I could turn it off, but that seems like a lot of work. No, I'm just kidding. I don't, maybe it's not the hill assist that's doing funky things. Basically got to get underneath it. I think we'll be all good. I think and now we got to get out of here and that is going to be just as much of a challenge as getting in here was oh, it would help if I release my brakes all right so now we figure out if we can get out of here bearings off. I think we're good. Okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. At least not that part. But now we got the worst part yet to come. So now you guys will actually get to see it because now I'm already unloaded so I've already got that dealt with. <laughs> I don't have to stress about coming in and getting unloaded and all that. You guys will see just how much this sucks. So we gotta really hug everything as we drive through here. So hugging that side, nearly smashing my mirror on stuff because We've got that ledge down there, and we obviously do not want our trailer to fall off of it. And at the same time, we don't want to smash these signs because I also almost did that on the way in. Man, this is super, super thin. All right, now we gotta suck up to this side, to the left, because then we gotta make this hard right-hand turn and there's a bunch of trailers parked here. But we also have to keep in mind the tail swing of the trailer. So I might be doing some getting out and looking while I make this corner just to make sure. I'm glad that they paved this. It looks like this didn't used to be paved. 
and I used all of that when I made this turn. All right. All right, actually my trailer might follow me enough that it'll be okay, but I'm still, just in case, I'm gonna get out and make sure and I am not gonna hit that with the tail. Oh yeah, no, we're already past it. Okay, cool. And then, yeah, and the tail swing won't hit the fence either. All right, I think we're gonna be fine. Super thin through here too. Oh, and this guy's gonna hook up to a trailer. So I might be waiting a minute. Oh, unless he's not hooking up to a trailer. Okay, I think he's letting me go. Yeah, he is. Cool. Good. I'm gonna take this off for a second. All right. I'm good to go? Yeah, good, Sweet, have a good one. Thank you for all your help, I appreciate it. You're See ya. All right, for now, I'm gonna go back down to that street that I was just parked at, the one that had the two hour parking. Um, send, we gotta send what's called an empty call, so I'll send that empty call, and then get directions to uh, the Fontana yard. I got I got approval to stay at the Fontana yard tonight even though it's kind of far from here and kind of far from where I'm picking up tomorrow. Um, I got approval just because there's literally no truck stops anywhere within like 40 miles of me. With that load, I'm going to go ahead and head to the yard. Uh, it is about an hour and a half away currently with traffic. Um, so it's a little bit further than I think my company would like, but I did get approval from my driver manager that if nothing else is available, that it's okay to go there and I have already checked there is nothing else available so that is literally the closest available thing so I'm gonna go ahead and head to the yard get a shower uh, get a good night's sleep and everything our load doesn't pick up tomorrow until 1 so we've got plenty of time to hang out and I'm gonna enjoy having a break for a little bit uh, I will admit this first load definitely was a little stressful a little bit more stressful than I thought it would be but um, we got it where it needed to go and I'm, I'm happy overall. Although everything did not go smoothly, um, we got it where it needed to go. I didn't have any major issues or anything like that. I made it everywhere safely. That's the most important thing. So um, yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys then. Peace.